Don't worry, Timekeeper. I'll defend myself. Back in the Foundation, I once won a public debate of a similar nature. This is my duty. I won't let it get in the way of the team's investigation. Sonato. By our tradition, Miss Sonetto will be given the poisoned wine, so she will be muted and stay that way forever. However, Sophia raised her objection against the decision. After giving the matter some discreet thought, I have decided it is necessary to hold an assembly and take care of it democratically. Those of you who agree to the death sentence may remain seated. Those of you who wish to commute Miss Sonetto's punishment, Please put your pebble into the pot in the middle of the hall. Now, Miss Aneto, Miss Vertin, you may defend yourselves. Until the sand in this hourglass falls to the bottom. I am Sonetto from St. Pavla Foundation. I wish all the honorable audiences here would lend me their ears to hear my defense as a humanitarian gesture. What number are you? Defendant, the court requires an answer. What is your number? What? Me? No, I don't have a number. Don't waste our time. People without a number cannot stand in the Hall of Truth. All her words are void. Sentence her to death now! Forty-two's argument is valid. Defenders? What do you wish to contend? What? It's valid? I... Objection! The last time we inflicted severe punishment was in 1980 to a visitor who ate beans. He ate a carbuncle that feeds on beans. Then he was sentenced to death according to the said theory. In our scripture, eating beans is the most evil sin, which undoubtedly fits the most severe punishment. But if we are now executing people for breaking the silence at the assembly, how would it reflect our attitude towards the consumption of beans? Has the latter become less sinful? I suggest Sonetto's punishment to be commuted. A good argument. 37's argument is deemed valid. The debate will continue. Objection. The punishment for eating beans is to throw the offenders into the Gorgon current, while the punishment for the silence breaker is to drink poisoned wine. Among all the punishments we have, there's no other punishment more dreadful than being thrown into the Gorgon current. Because eternity and infinity are the two things we have the least knowledge of which makes them the most ghastly punishments among all. Giving her the poisoned wine doesn't make the consumption of beans less sinful. Her argument is invalid. Objection! 
suspicion. Both of the crimes would fall into the same category if we are taking the punishment as a frame of reference, which is death. Objection. The two crimes in question are not commensurable, which makes your comparison invalid. What's this? I'm completely lost in this irrational debate. I... I see. So that's how it works. Timekeeper? Relax. I will help you. I'd like to start by quoting 42's first argument. People without a number cannot stand in the Hall of Truth. In that case, it's not possible for Sonetto to commit a crime in the Hall of Truth. Because she can't even be in the Hall. What? Good point, Virgin. This is our chance to out-argue them. are merely clumsy sophisms. We've all seen her break the maxim. Objection! What you see cannot be submitted to the court as a transcendental fact. It's nothing but the fragments of the phenomenal world which can't be used in your argument. Objection sustained. Please, ladies and gentlemen, keep the debate logically consistent. Since Sonetto has no number, and a person without a number does not exist before the truth, Sonetto thus didn't offend your truth. She didn't break any rules. Breaker has a number. 
we can all tell that she is very likely an integer. Therefore, she should be identified as an unknown number, not void. Your sophism has failed. 42's argument is held valid. Is there anything else you'd like to add, defendant? Uh, tell you a secret, Virgin. We would call criminals negative numbers. I got it. It is easy to prove Sonetto's innocence. According to the law of the excluded middle, Sonetto either committed a sin or committed no sin. The two statements cannot be both false at the same time. Since we consider a criminal as a negative number and a non-criminal as a positive number, Sonetto at present is considered an unknown number. That means she doesn't belong to the criminal set or the non-criminal set. She did not commit a sin and did not commit no sin. It's a paradox. I hereby demand to modify the criminal sentence that has been given to Sonetto. Three hours, 15 minutes left. No, nothing. Let's move on to the next. The law of excluded middle. A good sophism. Good for you to create a paradox from one sentence of my argument. But pitifully, you've made a fatal mistake. You've taken my argument as the basis of your defense. I said people without a number should be expelled from the Hall of Truth. You don't have a number either, Miss Outsider. Based on my argument, which has also been approved by you, I argue that all your arguments are invalid. <gasps> There's no time left. Thirteen has a number. I saw it. What? 37, do you know what you're saying? Yeah, I read her number, just now. 13's number is zero.